Joshua Morales podcast. What's up, guys? Welcome to the podcast. Uh, Robert, we have a very special guest today, man. I know. <laughs> and, and I always say special guest, and I, I always say that, but... Yeah, but they're all special. They're all special. Yeah, they're, they're, all they're all special to us because we've only hear about you all through Robert's story and then... For through some something more than us, people have reached out to us just like Gustavo Morales is mm-hmm. right here. And he is one of the survivors from that night that Robert helped pull out of the water. I uh, just want to thank you for coming on the show. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself, about what you're doing now before we get into to the podcast. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm from Brownsville, of course. But now I've been living in Austin for the past, uh, it's going to be three years now in August. And uh, I'm a self-employed, uh, been working all my life at uh, import export business. But besides that, now I'm uh, working, and I was telling Robert, I call it my hobby. I'm a soccer referee now. Wow. Right after my accident, two years after, uh, I became a soccer coach for boys and girls. And I had like 12 years coaching. Then I became a referee. Wow. And right now I'm working as a referee. It's a hard job. Yeah, it I is. wouldn't want it. <laughs> it yeah. is. But uh, I mean, there's a lot of running, a lot of screaming, a lot of yelling to you. <laughs> but uh, but no, it's fun. I, I, it's I kept like, you in I good like health. It. It's kept you in good health. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, totally. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's been helping me. Uh, I'm being in shape. Of course, I would like to be a little more skinnier, but uh, I'm good. <laughs> I think that's everybody. Yeah, that's all of us. <laughs> but, <laughs> But uh, no, it's uh, I like it and I love it. That's, so that's awesome. Good. And good. I work. That's one of the reasons that I, it was hard for me to come, because every single weekend I'm working. And you're either, in Austin now. Either in Austin or sometimes I'm traveling either to San Antonio or Houston or Dallas to do games. Wow. But uh, most of the time I'm in the Austin area. Gustavo, thank you for coming down. I know it was a, it was a long drive, but it, it's super awesome that you did. How does it feel seeing him? When was the last time you all saw each other? 17 oh, years. 17 Jeez. years. That's yeah. what I will just saw. 17 years. And how does it, how does it make you feel, Robert? Um, it's uh, I it's see a big old warm, smile yeah, on your man, face. It's a warming <laughs> feeling. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's like you know running into to a, a high school friend that you that that you know well and that you missed. You know, um, our our history is a little bit different. You know, we uh, we met that night in a very very terrible accident. Um, but I think we both have the same appreciation for one another, you know. Oh yes, we 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 definitely do, and um, so yeah, it's it's surreal is the best word I can use. It's surreal to see him here. So let's lay the groundwork for this because we were just talking off camera, and your vehicle was the last one that the last went one. off. Yes. So <clears throat> just take us back to that night. What do you remember? Well, I thought I had everything and uh, remember everything but now after seeing your podcast man there's a lot of stuff that i didn't know yeah that's exactly that's I mean, exactly what our goal was most that i don't remember even i i was telling my robert i called my dad uh, last week or two weeks that do you remember when i arrived to the hospital how my clothes were and he goes yeah they were all i mean they, they were i mean all messed like up shredded right shredded, with shredded scissors. Yeah. it looked like they were precisionally cut all up upwards. well Right, I don't remember that part. Wow. The only thing that I remember that I arrived with only one shoe. Wow. I remember that. Wow. I don't know what, but about the clothing, I don't remember anything. But uh, I think I remember what I went through and everything. Uh, but now it, it was ninety five. Now it's about eighty five, ninety percent. So, so talk about that when you went off the bridge. Like, just I guess take us moment by moment yeah. about what happened. I used to work, uh, I was working at the island as a restaurant manager. It was a Friday night, of course, and uh, so it was like I was doing my normal duties, uh, clean up and have uh, be ready for the next day and everything. So I, I, I started heading home uh, because my wife was pregnant at that time, seven, six and a half months uh, wow, pregnant. Wow, I didn't know that. Uh, I always, every single day I was calling her, you know, I'm on my way there, just so it's gonna take me 20, 30 minutes, but uh, just for you to know, I'm on my way there. I'll see you later. Bye. That night, remember, leaving the restaurant, and I don't know why, but uh, when I was getting into the causeway on my pickup, I saw the clock, and the clock was showing 1.43 a.m. I mean, that, uh, 100% sure, mm-hmm. 1.43 a.m. So my wife was driving, and then I saw coming from the bay lights, 
what you were telling on one of your uh, podcasts, light. But in my mind, I said, well, it's Friday night, they're fishing. I mean, well, what else could it be? And I said, okay, uh, and I kept driving. Two, I don't know, two seconds, one minute, or 30 seconds after, I was flying. Wow. <laughs> Wow. No breaks at all, nothing. So like you, you you literally didn't have any time to realize. Like It's not like you nah. could see the opening. No, I didn't know. put any brakes. Probably I put the brakes when I was on my In way down. Air, yeah. Because that's how, I mean, thank God I didn't have any broken bones. But my uh, ligament of tendons on my uh, left, uh, no, the right one, uh, got damaged. So it, it took me like uh, 10 months, one year wow. to get back to normality. But... Uh, but I, with no broken bones. Wow. So I think the break, because of the instinct, mm -hmm. I put the break when I was on my way down to the water. And that's when I tell you and the podcast, those of you guys that have been listening, as the cars were coming off the bridge, their taillights would light up and the engine would rev. Whoa. I think it's because they're yeah. pushing everything. Yeah. You know, they're, they're trying yeah, you're to, right. to wow. brace themselves and... And to stop or speed up, like the confusion. So I remember every car coming off the bridge being super loud because the pedal was all the way down and the brakes were super bright because they're pumping the brakes. Wow. So yeah, for you to say that you were hitting the brakes in the air, that was that's exactly what we saw. And another thing, even though it took me well after uh, what I mean after it happened, uh, supposedly according to the speed that I was going. Uh, the time it took me f since my uh, pickup uh, fell, of the bridge, yeah. fell off the bridge until I hit the water, it took like two seconds. Wow. wow. That's what uh, the friends, engineers have been telling me. How I mean, high is that bridge? 81. 81 wow. feet. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> One Mississippi, two Mississippi, and you're in the water. And you're in the water. Yeah. Wow. Remember on my way down, those two seconds, I mean, I, I don't know why. I remember that I was going like on a roller coaster holding to the wheel mm -hmm. and, and going like this because they, they, they one of the questions about how do you I mean do you want nose down or it flip or what I say I think I went nose down why because I remember like I run it run custom and then I was I mean through the of course I, I was not watching but uh, mm -hmm. I saw the water coming from the coming uh, in from the window from, from the, the doors. Window, yeah because of the uh, water that broke down the, yeah. the pipes. The pipes, yeah. That was on the bridge, on, mm -hmm. on the causeway. Wow. So those two, I mean, I remember that then I hit the water. That time, I didn't know what, what, what was going on. I don't know if uh, I got a flat tire. I don't know if someone hit me from the back. Uh, I didn't know exactly what was going on. Completely disoriented. I even, yeah. even when we found you in the water, I could tell that he was physically okay. You know, he wasn't all cut up or his clothes were shredded. But he, you were still like, ¿Qué pasó? like what happened? Like, what yeah, I on? remember because I, I think it was, uh, it was, uh, I don't know, it was Tony or. Remember the first question when they were they, they were pulling me out of mm -hmm. the water to pull me on the on the on the boat. I asked him another terrorist attack. Yes, what happened? Remember, yeah. And they told me, no, just calm down. It was just an accident. I said, okay. I didn't see the the the, the tugboat, barge. the barge, until the next day on TV. Wow. Because I swam to the opposite side where the tugboat was, and the tugboat went through, so, right? Yeah. And, then, and then stopped on the other side mm -hmm. of the causeway, yeah. So when you, you were in the water, did you roll down your windows? N well, at the beginning, the human instinct was trying to uh, break down the window with my hand. I was, I mean, I, didn't, I mean, at that time, I, I didn't realize that I was wearing my seatbelt. So uh, I think, uh, and I remember hitting the, the, the door with my, my leg. Try to open and, it. Yeah, try to open it. Because I, I did try to open it, and of course it didn't open because it had the, 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 the a lock. Mm -hmm. And then uh, those few moments, few minutes, I don't know how long I was underwater. I stood underwater. I don't, I don't remember that. But... Uh, I was then I realized something and 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 and, and, and like I like told my dad, uh, those five ten seconds, uh, something that man and I don't know how to explain it. Something uh, I was real calm, and I'm telling you five seconds, ten seconds, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, I don't know. I mean, of course it was God, mm -hmm. but. Uh, that made me realize, hey, wait, you're wearing the seatbelt. So I took, I mean, I took out the seatbelt. Thank God it didn't stuck because sometimes yeah, it's a toren, yeah. it's a and then 
you cannot do you anything. You can't get out, yeah. And then I realized that my pickup had uh, manual windows. So I rolled down the window. Don't ask me when I took, uh, okay, one, two, three. <gasps> no, I didn't realize, I mean, I remember that. I just remember rolling down the window and boom, that's how I, I, I was able to get out of my uh, truck. Wow. Now, the, 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 oh, another question they've been asking me, have the cabin fill out of water right away? And I said, no. I was feeling that the water was coming through the brake. Mm -hmm. Through the pedals. Through the pedals. And, uh, and that's when, at one moment, I, re I mean, I was thinking, wow, I don't want to die like this. Oh, my God. Jeez. That is insane. So you're the last one. That means that you were most likely on top of other Everyone. vehicles. Yeah. That's another thing, uh, question they've been asking me. How did that I went? And I said, you know what? I don't think because I, it didn't took me that long just to get to the surface. Uh, uh, but I, I mean, I don't think I went that deep. Probably because I hit uh, some pillars or mm -hmm. other cars. I don't or know. Or other cars. Yeah. I don't know. Wow. Jeez, man. That, that has to be so insane to... When I uh, when I was around the surface, I was looking the the causeway right in front of me. So that I didn't I didn't uh, I didn't swim up. I went to one side oh, because when okay. I get out of the surface, I was lo watching the looking at the causeway right in front of me. You could already see the gap where it was. I broken. see. I saw the gap and I saw the water falling down yeah. and everything. So why? Don't ask me. And it's amazing because if you think about it, had you floated towards the west side of the bridge there was that electrical cable, oh. you know, so. Oh, really? Yeah, there was a cable, a big, big fat cable that was hanging off of the bridge. It Ooh, would wow. hit the water <laughs> and and it would like pop, it would explode. It would shoot it right back up. So it's it's amazing that, <clears throat> that you floated away from that because had he been there under the water, un under the cable, could have gone electric. Yeah, and, uh, and also the, the uh, uh, Brigitte and Rene also, they swung, we swung to the same yes, side. Yeah, That's everybody. right, because if your vehicle went in, then you would have been facing the left side, which you yeah, would have naturally yeah. gone out west. West. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And he, and he came out to the east and, and towards the island. Is we're like closer on that side. So take us back to, to when you first saw him in the water. We, at that point, already had Bridget um, on the boat. And you had something in your hands, or I think there was something that I didn't know if it was a jacket or what, and really? you're on your back. Yeah, you were. It looked like you were holding on to something. Wow! And then when you saw us, you threw it and went to the boat, like towards the boat, and we threw you a float. Yeah, I, re I remember the float. When I before you got there to me, I remember that. I know how to swim. That's another thing that uh, I think they helped, helped me out. Yeah, definitely. Because they've been asking, well, what about the, the fishermen were not there? At the, and I say, well, thank God I know how to swim. I was going to swim to a pillar or I don't know. Bridget had been swimming and floating for about 10 minutes. And her, yeah. her thought of mine or her train of thought was, I'm going to swim towards the island. Yeah, but it was too far yeah, away. It's too far, you know. <laughs> no. It's way too far. No, I realized that. Then I remember lying down, uh, lying down on the on the on the water, mm -hmm. like, floating because my, my my the pain of my on my leg was. Uh, I mean, I thought at that moment that my I had a broken bone mm -hmm. because the pain it was. I mean, it was too too strong, too hard. So I tried to relax to just to lay down and float and say, well, let's see, if we, because I didn't realize at the time about about them. I mean, I thought I was on my own, and then I heard the screaming from Bridget. So I start screaming to you, I'm here, uh, let's, let, let's wait. I mean, just don't leave. Were you two screaming at each other in the dark kind I of? I think at that moment, we, uh, I remember wow. screaming just, just to, for, for her to know that I was there, and uh, probably for, for, for her me to, to know that yeah. she was there. And, uh, but no, this, I mean, when I was trying just to, sorry, and like, like just on your back, on, on my back, no, there was a, lot of a uh, strong uh, Current, gas. Oh, gasoline uh, smell. Yeah. Smell. Well, you were essentially floating and, in gas. And yeah. I saw a lot of uh, <laughs> debris and from uh, probably plastic from the cars. I don't mm -hmm. know. And I said, shoot, no. Let me let me just be, be ready. I think you wound up grabbing something that you saw floating. floating. Yeah. We, and, I, and I remember thinking, but what is he holding on to? But when you saw us, you let it go and we threw you the floating... Uh, the flotation device. Let me ask you, I always felt guilty from leaving you. 
because we left you there for. Do a you remember bit. that? Really? You yeah, when me? we gave you the floating device, I had to leave and turn around and come around to position my the boat so we could get you on. No, I don't remember you that don't part. You remember that? No, you I see. always felt like because you were you were. And did I say something? Yeah, uh, you were like, "Where are you going? Don't leave!" Don't and and the current would move me around. Yeah, I know. It was and I was strong. afraid that it would turn me e and that the propeller would hit, hit you. me. So I had to do a big wide circle to come back to you. I don't remember that part. I remember, I remember when you pulled me out of the water, the question that I asked about the, it was a mm -hmm. is it was that? It, yeah. And then uh, right away, let me call, you have a phone, let me call my, my I know I called my parents uh -huh. first, but they didn't answer. And then uh, my dad or my mom told me, no, my dad told me, it was at two, when I called it, it was after two o'clock already. And he saw a weird number and I said, ah, drunk kid there just yeah. playing around because I called like two three times and he didn't mm -hmm. answer then I called my wife and wow. uh, she had answered and I told her what happened I mean what I remember I told her I, I fell into the water and she said what what do you mean from no with all my pickup I went into the, what happened I said I'm okay don't worry I don't know where I'm gonna go but I just mm -hmm. let go with my uh, parents house and let them know so my wife the one who go and and, 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 and told, told your parents my parents wow. Wow. So when you were lying on your back there, what was going through your head? My family. Yeah, that's the, that, that's, that's the best answer right there. Because yeah. when I started seeing the cars fall off the bridge, that's what was going through my head. My family, even inside of the pickup before, uh, before I uh, got out, uh, my wife, who was pregnant, six and a half months pregnant, Pregnant, yeah. Take your time. Take your time. You see, I told you. Yeah. And my daughters. I'm glad. I'm glad we were there for all of them. And you know what's interesting about this is that your son, that was your wife, was six, seven months pregnant, and now your son's twenty years old. He's gonna turn twenty in December. Wow. Bendito sea Dios. Wow. Ah, thank God. He's. I think he's your. My he's son's so age. tall. He's yeah. uh, I think now he's uh, six foot tall. My son, wow. five yeah. five to eleven. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know. <laughs> how does how does that make you feel knowing Dude, that? That's awesome. That's awesome. We 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 um, were put in the right place at the right time so that Gustavo could witness his children grow up and continue with his life and do things that he's done. Um, it gives me goosebumps, man. Because I have kids, and I know I know what it what it is to love somebody so much, yeah. and and I'm happy for you, Gustavo. I'm so happy that uh, that you survived that, and that um, I can feel how grateful you are without you saying anything. Oh yeah, you know, I can feel the love that you have for you, your kids. They've been asking me. In fact, my my dad, uh, have you noticed any change in your life after what you went through? And a lot of people have been asking me. And I said, you know what? Yes, probably it's not very, very uh, noticeable. But, mm -hmm. uh, they're gonna. I mean, I'm still like a normal person and everything, but I see a lot of uh, small details in life that probably a lot of people they don't see it. That's One funny. thing that I remember with my my mom, which she passed away uh, four years now, uh, when there were kind of uh, problems in the office, uh, problems in I don't know that something that things that were not going the right way. Mm -hmm. Uh, remember when my, my mom was telling me, Gustavo, I don't see you, I mean, worry. I mean, you look, and I say, no, mom, I mean, I'm worried, but I don't, uh, I don't show it. I don't uh, you know, demonstrate. Stress I mean, my, my, my reaction is now different. I mean, after what I went through, I know you're right. Nothing compares to it. Yeah. No, nothing. Yeah, it's que our lives are so fragile. And when, and when you waste time worrying about a bill or a problem <laughs> or, or, or a friend, or something that's out of your control, it takes away from, it takes away from the the now. I mean, I'm a human being. I'm still worried oh, about problems absolutely. and all that, uh, uh, payments and 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 and, and sickness and uh, family and everything. But uh, I show it in a different way. Like uh, you're gonna see me, and oh, he looks very normal. But no, I mean, I'm still human being. So. But the way I uh, show it is is probably a little bit different. A little bit different. That's, that's what I. That's what it changed me. Do you suffer from any PTSD from from that? Never. Wow. 
never. One thing that I remember and that my dad uh, told me, in fact, at the hospital, he told me, you need to speak, let it, let, I mean, let it go, let it go. Uh, speak, speak. That's why at the beginning I was the only one that I was given uh, interviews. Interviews, that's right. Uh, uh, with a newspaper, TV, radio, and I was the only one who, because, and it helped out. me a lot. It yeah, helped me a lot. Yeah. Well, how do you feel about what we're doing with the podcast now, sharing it 20 years later in such detail? I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's awesome. So, I mean, like me, that I was there, that I'm one of the survivors. There's a lot of things that I, I didn't know. Mm-hmm. I thought I knew everything, but no. Yeah, there, there's, there's a lot of stuff that I, I didn't know. When so, Josh and I started talking about doing this, Josh was very adamant that it's not just your story, Robert. We got to get everybody's story because there's so many different oh, yeah. angles and views. And um, and I didn't know how we were going to do that yeah. because we had lost communication and, and, and I didn't know all these other captains that have surfaces that were involved and, and, and participated in things that night. So, yeah, no, this, is, this has been a passion project of ours. And to see you here, it's 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 very warming. It's very uh, no. Thanks for inviting me. Definitely. And uh, yeah, but I mean, and all the people you've been in, uh, in interviewing and that that being here, the captains, uh, Pastor uh, Pastor Hyde. Hyde. Uh, I, I don't remember. Probably he approached me some, but I don't remember him. I remember the other uh, father was from uh, the Catholic Church mm-hmm. that is in uh, Port Isabel. But uh, what he said, Pastor Hyde and everything, wow. Yeah, and no, then they, no. the captains, you also, they were here. They too. were there and around in the water that night. Um, I always wondered what it was like realizing that you're on your way in off the bridge for you guys. So to hear you tell your story and how the water started coming up through the pedals and you were able to roll down your windows to get out, that brings me anxiety just sitting here i can't i can't even go into my closet and close the door because me da, me da ansias to think about knowing that you're underwater knowing that your vehicle's filling up and still have the mental capacity to slow down and think is what i sometimes fear i don't at have. one point yeah like i mentioned at one point before the, that that calm mm-hmm. came uh I, I mean, I was like, uh, well, I was feeling the water coming in. I said, shoot, uh, d- God, please, I don't want to die right now. Yeah, right now. Yeah, I don't be killed out of it. <laughs> wow. Take, is... take us back to, the, to when you were already on the boats, when, when the, <laughs> the Coast Guard got there. What do you remember? The, uh, I remember uh, I was, I think Bridget was on this side. I was sitting mm-hmm. on the back, right? Mm-hmm. And I remember uh, the way I was sitting because my again my leg I was kind of like I was in a, a spring break on yeah. the beach or something. I was like lounging. I was uh-huh. like this, uh-huh. just watching, <laughs> watching exactly the sky. Right. right? I yeah, remember that's right. that. That's right. He was la- laying down, basically lounging down like this, basically just kind of absorbing everything that was happening. Exactly. And then I didn't know that that uh, you were asking. I mean, you're for and Bridget or what? Asking what happened to your clothes? Uh-huh. And that I, I was not answering. Is it looked true? like he was. Yes. was in, no, you I were was just somewhere else. You were just wow. looking at the stars. You were looking at the probably stars. That, that's what I uh, I I was in Chuck at that time mm-hmm. because before that I was always uh, I mean ready to see what's uh, what's going to what, happen yeah. or how you could help. But no, so he probably when I was at the boat, I say, well, you know what, I made it. So and then I probably that why I was in Chuck because I don't remember those questions and I don't I don't remember answer you back. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I no, don't know. It was he it. it that's why when I was describing Gustavo, it was disoriented because it was like yeah. he knew something had happened, but there he just couldn't piece together. Yeah, and I think he was stuck thinking, "Did I cause an accident? Did did this happen? Did I?" You know, he was just in his mind thinking, "Que acaba de suceder?" You know what just happened? It's strange how how the the mind just changed because I mean sure. before the, before I before I went in Chuck uh, because I, I mean definitely mm-hmm. what you're saying probably uh, that moment I was in Chuck so mm-hmm. I, mean, I, I don't I didn't know exactly what was going on but just go back just two minutes three minutes I was awake because I I, I called my wife I called yeah, my parents yeah, yeah. so I was awake but then after and again after I was already on the boat. Uh, 
say, you know what, I made it, and probably that's when I went into, I don't remember I think that. he started realizing, he, yeah, he had already called, he knew his parents were being made aware of, he had already spoken to his wife, he was already safe on the boat. I think that's when he realized and his mind just caught up with everything. And he, okay, he, correct, yeah. Como que se dormió despierto. It was just like... <laughs> yeah, that's right. Like just... Probably. Daydream. Because I, I, I mean, I don't remember those questions, but uh, now that you're saying. So what I remember, uh, when I was on the boat, I remember the Coast Guard mm -hmm. came. And they moved us from your boat to, to, the, their, to, to their boat. To their boat, and then... All three, right? Yeah. Bridget, Renan, mm -hmm. and me. And then... Five minutes, ten minutes later, we'll everybody back, back on back Robert's boat. Wow. I never told how <laughs> them two also got put on the boat. I always talk about Rene because he was on a gurney, yeah. mm -hmm. and we struggled with them. They were just kind of picked up and pulled on. Wow! Yeah, because and we were able. I mean, even yeah, even with, with his leg, injury, we he was able, able to, to walk. Move. Yeah, to move. So when you got on the boats, what what was it like up there? What what were the on the uh, on, the, on the, the coast guard on, on the coast guard? I don't remember that. I mean, was, I just went. It was fast. Yeah. yeah. Wow. They, blew us, they go back. No, you know what? Go back. So Bridget, Roland, and Tony and Leroy are helping Bridget up. Like she's literally like stepping on their shoulders, and she's on the boat. Gustavo's next. Boom. We get Rene. Rene, and then this guy comes out and says, "What are y'all doing?" Uh-uh. They all have to go back, and they literally lowered all of these three Jeez. previously. <laughs> you know, injured people yeah. back onto my tiny little boat in comparison and send us on our way. Wow. So get on the boat, get off the boat, get out of here. Do you remember going to the Coast Guard station? Yeah, I remember that. that I was going to say uh, after, I don't know, an hour, two mm -hmm. hours. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, I don't know, yeah, a long the time. time. Something that I don't have a exact moment, the, the time we oh, spent the time there, frame, yeah. The time frame. I remember getting to the Coast Guard station. Uh, we, I mean, they pulled us out of the boat. Yeah. And then there were some benches there mm -hmm. or something. So I said, uh, Bridget started walking yeah, around. Yeah, Bridget was pacing Bridget started everywhere. walking, I remember. But now I was sitting on the bench. Uh, remember Renee lying on, mm -hmm. the, on the... On the gurney, on, on the, the concrete. On, yeah. And then the helicopter came. They put Renee and me on the helicopter. But then it was too much of a uh, weight. So they asked me, how do you feel? I said, no, I feel good. Do you have any? I said, I only felt my, my leg. That's, that's about it. Okay, we're going to uh, move you out. Because, I mean, the, there was too much weight for the, mm -hmm. helicopter. For the helicopter. So they put me back again. And wow. they, they, they took off with, with Rene. Mm -hmm. And we st I stood there with, with uh, Bridget until the, the other Coast Guard. Yeah, until the other Coast, Coast Guard, Guard people came. came. Wow. On my way from the... Coast Guard Station to Port Isabel, uh, one of the Coast Guard, I'm assuming, and I don't remember his, I don't know his name, but he always was, he was grabbing my hand, mm -hmm. and, he, and he was telling me, don't go to sleep, don't go to sleep, and I said, no, man, I, I, I think that I'm was Chris, yeah. The one you mentioned, yeah, Chris, Chris, probably mm -hmm. was him. He was holding my yeah. hand the whole, from the time he took us from, from uh, the Coast Guard Station to, the, to, Port Isabel. to Port Isabel. He was holding my hand, and he was telling me, don't go to sleep. How do you feel? Oh, no, I'm good. Uh, in fact, I, I was trying to get up to see what was going what on. Was going on. No, no, just stay down, relax, lay down, lay relax, down. Just yeah. stay there, relax. Everything is good. Are you feeling? How are you feeling? Good, good. The whole, I don't know how long it took us from from. The, oh, because. from there it was like maybe a twenty minute, thirty minute ride. So then the helicopter was at the the board. I mean the, the Coast Guard station. Coast, Coast Guard station. station. It wasn't there at the moment, no. right? Uh, yeah. The problem they call him, and uh, I don't know how long it took for the helicopter to arrive. But, uh, but yeah, they tried to put me inside of the helicopter with Rene. And then, you know what, Gustavo, are you feeling okay? Yeah. Are you good? Yeah, are you sure? Yes. And then they put him into the ambulance. <laughs> yeah, wow. and they put him in the ambulance. How does that feel, like getting taken off the Coast, uh, Coast Guard boat and then being taken off the helicopter? How, how does that make you? I didn't feel anything. Yeah. I mean, after everything that I went through, and I, I mean, I, I, I saw it normal. It's so. a testimony to how disoriented everybody was. It, it, it's, it's proof that nobody had any clue about what to do. Literally, Coast Guard people told us, get them on our boat, and we did that. And then another Coast Guard came by and said, no, put them back on Robert's boat. Yeah. You know, and then we get to the Coast Guard station, and no, the helicopter's over there. So 
they, we get there, they load them both on. Wait a minute, it's too heavy. Take him off. Like it was just, and nobody knew what to do. Everybody yeah. was working on this and looking at the bridge. You okay? You okay? Oh my God! Look, and everybody was in awe of what happened. That they didn't know how to how to tend to the people who needed it. Yeah, they were not ready it was for crazy. A, uh, that type of accident. Yeah. I mean. Well, it was not expected to happen. Never, so never expected, yeah, never to, happen. expected to happen. I don't think there. I would be shocked to find out that Port Isabel, South Padre Island, the Coast Guard, all had or have had any kind of training in preparation for the bridge being out. I don't think it exists because yeah. if it did, none of the people who were there that night went through that training. You know what's interesting about that too is when when we were talking, uh, Celeste found us all this stuff that she found that the Coast, Heart, Coast Guard had given recommendations about what to do for the bridge and only like two of them were ever done. Like, wow. So like after the whole thing happened, it's, just, it's crazy, like nothing, Nothing's changed Nothing's at the island, changed, yeah, like with nothing. the bridge. And I was asking the captains, like, can you foresee this happening again? I said, yes. Well, yeah. I mean, we've had a plane hit the bridge. Yeah, before, I know. Several, several boats and tugboats um, have bumped into co the causeway. Yep. What happened, what made this night different was that hurricane was in the Gulf. The riptide was extremely, extremely strong. How dark was it that night? Real dark, real dark. I mean, I don't know how far away were uh, be, me, between Bridget and me, but I, I couldn't see her. Wow. Yeah, it was so dark. In the boat? It, no, 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 we no. were in the water. In the water, yeah. Oh, wow. While we were in the water, the, you already mentioned that on one of your podcasts, uh, the lights were off. Mm -hmm. And I remember because uh, two days or three days before, I was talking to one of my friends, or I don't remember who, about the lights. Hey, there weren't there. There's no lights. I mean, it's hard to see. I mean, uh, on the driving, you have your headlights. Driving, yeah. yeah. So there were no lights, not because of the uh, accident. There were no lights before. Wow. Yeah. So it was everything. I mean, it was all was dark. dark. I mean, I couldn't see no one. Jeez. Yeah, no, it's super, super dark. And then I can't imagine floating in a dark water. Yeah. In a bay where you know there's sharks, you know there's all kinds of fish and barracudas, and how deep, and it's just yeah, there's no that's way. Man. I mentioned my daughter at that time; she was the oldest one. She was five years old, and uh, that were there any sharks in the water? I said, I don't know. You have. <laughs> <laughs> like at the time, he, just, he doesn't know if he's see. bleeding. He doesn't yeah. know what. Like my mind would have immediately gone crazy if I was if it was me floating in the water. Me vuelto loco. Just just thinking about. Well, I, get, I get in the water just on the regular beach and I'm freaked and I'm out freaked sometimes. Out, yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> Or if you've ever been on a tube and they're pulling you and then you fall off the tube and you oh, got to yeah. wait for them to come pick you up. You're floating there. You're thinking, what's Whoa. under me? Wow. The idea, during the day, I can't imagine at, at night, night yeah. and how dark it was. Um, yeah, no, that, that's, you, you guys have an amazing survival story. I didn't realize or I wasn't thinking, oh, it's too dark. Uh, I was trying just to survive, I was trying just to float. Mm -hmm. I mean, and then I swamp a little bit just around there. Then, then that's when I went to try to lay on my back. But uh, about the darkness, I didn't realize how dark it was. Uh -huh. I mean, it, after that, I couldn't see Bridget. We were just screaming at each other just to see that we were there. But uh, I didn't feel any, uh, or I didn't felt any so, panic. So Bridget was in the water, or she was in the boat? No, no we were all three. Oh, you yeah, were both all three in the water. were in the water before they, they, they before we got. So y'all were screaming there. at each other, yeah, and you couldn't see her. No, wow. just screaming at another. Rene, voice. I never saw him in the water until yeah, uh, he was away of the boat. Yeah, I didn't know that. He was walking uh, when we found him. I didn't know that. I mean, yeah. how he was able to, to to when they rolled him over. He just spit out a bunch of water, you know, wow. and he started yelling. I wonder if he was kind of like, like to the side, trying to yell, trying and to then yell. He just, and he just was so couldn't. exhausted, like. Yeah, he was severely hurt. His back was hurting several. Yeah, places. I remember Rene on the water uh, until I saw him on the mm -hmm. on the boat already. Wow. Yeah, yeah wow. because again by that time, Gustavo was already just kind of looking at the there, sky, looking at yeah. the sky, you know, <laughs> in a daze, just like, wow, what yeah. just happened.
Jeez. Yeah. Um, so obviously the podcast, uh, I got to say, uh, please subscribe to the podcast if you're enjoying everything that we're doing. We're trying to grow this as much as we can. We're also trying to get more credible information from people that were out there on the water that night. And that includes the other survivors. I know it's not everybody's time to come out on the podcast. Mm-hmm. And I, we 100 respect, yeah, I respect that. that. We, we get it. We understand. And But the, the invitation is there is for anybody that has credible information and of course we'd love to get the the survivor's uh point of view from that night because i think it's such an integral part of this story and yeah and and every survivor have their own have their own yeah what what uh, they went through so so i'm i'm curious if all of the vehicles that um were carrying a survivor had roll-up windows now because it's two you had Roll manual up win- windows, manual yeah, windows, windows, and so did Bridget. But not Rene. But Rene didn't. No, he was driving a, a Mustang. Mustang. Yeah, that's right. You were telling me, though, that, that all the survivors had their seatbelts on. Yes, oh, that yes. we did know. Yeah, Every That helped me, and that's one advice that I want to give. No matter how long you're going to drive or work, how far you're going to be driving, always wear your seatbelt. Seat you never know. If you think that about helped it, me a lot. I mean, it 100% up. saved me. And I can, uh, I know by fact. Wow. In fact, uh, three, f- my, I have some burns on, on the side of my mm-hmm. waist and right here because of the, probably the pressure yeah. of the, of the belt when you hit that it lasts him like, uh, man, two weeks, I think. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. wow. Sheesh. But if you think about it, it's what carry, it's what held his weight. Cause if not, he, when he hit the water, he would have. Yeah, I know. Falling Going right to into the, the pedals. To yeah. the pedals or, or, the, or the, the, the wheel. Steering wheel. Yeah. The steering wheel. What's crazy is, is you showed us the picture of your truck. Oh, wow. And I'll shit. show it I'll show it on the podcast here. But wow. Yeah. Like, wow. Jeez. Like when you saw that, how did yeah, it make you feel? Man, did I was inside of this pickup? Of course. Again, uh, the pickup, they put it off the water. Uh, they pull it off of the water, uh, I don't know, a week after or mm-hmm. I don't know how long. So uh, but there's a lot of uh, the pillars that went. Uh, fell down the follow the following, the following day, Saturday, day yeah. a lot of stuff. But I uh, mean, it's to see how my pickup was. It's crazy. Wow. Yeah, it is. It, it is a uh, a true miracle that um, that you were able to get out of the, that that truck as quickly as you did, and uh, and 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 virtually really unhurt. Yeah, basically. Think about it. What it's surprised me now that you're saying unhurt. It's a uh, Bridget. She went to my r- hospital room the following day when she, when she was already out, mm-hmm. and uh, sorry, it's okay. And uh, uh, because we got to the hospital at six o'clock in the morning, by twelve one o'clock same day she was already out of the hospital. Wow. Physically, I didn't see any 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 nothing. On, on her nothing. Nothing on her. was wrong with her. Yeah, me. Yeah. I, I mean, I was only uh, two days, a day and a half at the hospital. I mean, thank God, nothing major. And the uh, rest of the recovery at what's at home. Yeah. Wow. So Bridgewater Towing, we found this out uh, recently. Celeste uh, shared it with me. Um, they put the first legal documents into the court system at 3.45 p.m. I know. That day. I saw that. I saw they that. They filed that, that uh, motion. 2.45. No? It was 3.45. 3.45. Yeah, 3.45. Yeah, and they said that. that we're only worth $250,000. Yeah. You can't get anything from us. Yeah. What, what? How does that make you feel? Knowing that, that people had perished and everything that happened tonight, how, how does that make you feel? I don't know. Uh, in fact, uh, right after, of course... <laughs> It was a crazy after I was on my, at home. Mm-hmm. There were a lot of uh, reporters, uh, DPS, reporters, DPS. and uh, a lot of uh, uh, lawyers calling me. And then on the interviews, I reported, what about the, uh, are you going to file a lawsuit? And I said, you know what, I don't want to talk about any legal matters. Just leave that to my mm-hmm. lawyer. And, uh, and so while you're asking me, I mean, right now, I feel like uh, shit, man. They, I mean, they didn't care about the no. about, about the those who die or we that survive. Mm-hmm. They, they were, they didn't care. They didn't care. What's interesting is when I was talking to the captains, and they were saying that they felt no human compassion from them. They were chugging water like if they were about to have a drug test. But pretty much what it was. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. The, ca- the the crew members. That's two from captains the from the tugboat. From the tugboat. 
um, two of the captains that have been on uh, Josh's podcast have both said that they witnessed in the galley, which is like the kitchen of the boat, that several of the crew members were chugging water and chugging everything they can of get, water, a hold coffee, of, anything, and so that they cigarettes. could clean their system out. Oh, I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. And it's crazy because we saw some of the toxicology reports yep. and, and what was interesting about that was the Coast Guard. Uh-huh. Like, talk about that. The Coast Guard with... Um, <clears throat> did you went into the... Did you go to the tugboat or... No, 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 oh, no. Okay. The <laughs> captains that were that were on the podcast, Yeah, yeah those saw, guys took different border patrol and different entities to the tugboat and actually one of them actually climbed on and yeah. was invited on okay so that's what, yeah i heard one of the okay one and, of them climbed okay and he was the one who was kind of offended because the guy who invited him on the boat didn't care you know he was just very being very nonchalant what's interesting about that too is that there was there was a live video feed and and one of the captains put out his hand and, and you can see his, see hand, his hand there yeah, on the video. and the the guy from the the tugboat he was like look we're on tv i'm gonna get laid yeah he goes i'm gonna get laid off oh, of the sh- story forever and Man, no, I and, didn't know that. And sure enough, the captain, the local from from Port Isabel, uh, was offended by the comment and told him something. And then the crew member of the barge boat asked him to leave. He says, "No, you know what? I think the insurance uh, company won't like wouldn't you like you being on the on our vessel. So you probably shouldn't go." But he got to he got to get there and see all of that. Oh, that you wow. know. And then the other the other captain, he said that when he was passing them. That they were just drinking coffee, coffee like yeah. nothing. Like, like, coffee. Nothing happened. Yeah, yeah. In in, oh. I I remember seeing one or two guys running on the barges themselves with lights, and you could see you couldn't see them, but you could see their lights bobbing around and running around, and so you knew somebody was on the boat. But I never really saw any of the any of the crew members because the the barge was on the south side of the bridge, and the majority of the things that we were doing when we were picking on up the, on the other side. was on the north side. Yeah, like I told you at the beginning, I didn't see the barge until the tugboat until the next day on TV. Until the next wow. day on TV. <laughs> so you didn't even have a clue what happened. Wow. No. Were you? Did you? I don't remember seeing you at a lot of the mediations. Did you go to all of them as well? I think I don't know to all of them, but uh, one thing that and good that you mentioned, for example, that one that you went where they were showing the, the pictures, pictures. Probably uh-huh. I didn't go to that. I didn't go to that one. That's what I was going to ask you about about those pictures uh, because yeah. I think that a lot of a lot of uh, that had a lot of impact on me. Those pictures in in you know specifically because when you see that it's it's something that you can't erase from your mind i saw some pictures after uh, the newspaper or uh, through the internet where there uh, there's one picture there where there's the crane with mm-hmm. a pickup with, with a car yeah with a pull car, a car, pull a car. that's the only one that i remember the other one of course that's been there forever the this uh, uh the Gaspar, from Gaspar, Gaspar, cars. Yeah, car. but Beside those pictures, I don't remember any other picture. Well, my truck, my pickup. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember um, maybe hearing or seeing um, Gaspar, the one that was on the pillar? No, I didn't hear anything. Okay. No. Uh, he, Gaspar was on the west side of the of the gap, and Gustavo and Bridget were on the east side. Okay. Yeah, because that's one thing. And uh, when we were in the water before they th- th- they got there, I don't remember seeing the car. I mean, crash on yeah, the pillar. I didn't. I didn't. See, I mean, physically, I didn't see it. I mean, I saw it the next day on the pictures and and on TV. But uh, but like me telling me, yeah, I saw the car. No, I didn't see the car wow. because I was probably on the other like. By any chance, say. do you remember if there was a lot of traffic on the causeway or was it? No, that's not because uh, when I was uh, when I was driving, mm-hmm. I don't remember seeing any any any. Uh, cars behind me behind you Good. because from from the opposite side well there were no cars yeah. because the gap was already there yeah it was already there and uh but i don't remember seeing any but probably there were some the guy who stopped the guy who stopped yeah, yeah probably he was behind me and he saw me yeah going down i wonder how long between the cars falling did each one happen happen yeah like, like this, because yeah. i mean if it was no, no, no. One there, there was, there was, there was two that went over right next to each other. Just one, wow. two. Wow. The first one, 
there was enough time between that one and the next one for us to throw everything off of our boats and start going. And then when we started going again, another one. I remember, sorry to interrupt yeah, you, yeah, when you ahead. mentioned that, and that's true, because I remember I saw it. When they were, when he told me that, that uh, yeah, they loaded, were, the, mm -hmm. I saw, I don't know if, it, no, it wasn't you, I don't know who, Tony, Tony or, or yeah. someone, throwing away ice chest and, yeah, everything. and uh, I don't know what he was throwing away. And I say, hey, they're throwing away the beers. No, not really. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, that when they mentioned that they, Throw it away all their equipment. Yeah, yeah, it's true. I saw it, and I remember that part. You know, I think the Johnny's True Value from South Padre Island called us up. It just popped into my head right now, and and they re-equipped all of us wow. with each of us got an ice chest, each of us got the pin reels and the the rod for a boat that doesn't no longer for exist. a boat that I didn't even have anything to do with anymore. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And we never went fishing after that. I, I personally haven't gone fishing after that in the Laguna Madre at night ever again. That was the last time I got into the water at night in the Laguna Madre. Do you still travel to the beach? Yeah. In fact, uh, right after the reopening uh, mm -hmm. ceremony, they invite me. Uh, well, I think Channel 5. Uh, they invite me. Well, they invite us all the survivors, but mm -hmm. I was the only one who went through the reopening of the oh, causeway. The causeway. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, yeah, they, they invite me in the, I crossed up, my first time that I crossed the causeway after the accident was on a limousine. Wow. Oh, nice. With, with uh, ch uh, channel, uh, channel ABC, I think it was channel five, I don't remember. But uh, yeah, that was my first time. The next day, I told my wife, you know what, let's go to the island. Why do you wanna go to the, I wanna, f I, I wanna have the feeling, of, I mean, driving, I, I want to drive again. Okay, let's go. So, so you knew uh, that you just had to get it over with. Yeah, like, oh yeah. Just move on. Yes, yes, I did it. Yeah, because that, that's the crazy thing about life. And I always talk about this yeah. is no matter, and I've never gone through anything as traumatic as you guys, so I can't really compare. But I, I, I feel like obviously people are going through hardships or through times, even with COVID, anything that's going on in their lives, they still have to get up mm -hmm. and do what they got to do. Yes, you have to move on. I mean, thank God uh, he gave me another opportunity and we have to move on. So that's why I told my wife, you know what, let's go. I want to drive. Are you sure? Yeah, let's go. How old were you at that time? 36. Wow. Yeah, 36. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I just turned on uh, 56 this past uh, Wednesday. Felicidades. Wow. Thank you. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. No, thank you. So again, every year, every day, it's a new day for me. That's awesome. That is awesome. I like that you said that because um, it is, and, and everybody should treat like I mean, a way. new day that I give thanks because I give him another opportunity mm -hmm. of, uh, to live my life. Yeah. You remember being in the water smelling gas? Yes. Two of a you lot. guys were soaked in gas. Yeah. That, that is crazy. Like when they jumped in, they jumped yeah, they in jumped all into that gas. gas. Yeah, into gas. And Roland and Leroy, their eyes were bloodshot because you had salt water in them you had gasoline in them and you we didn't have any since we had thrown everything off the boat we didn't have rags we didn't have so they literally couldn't even wipe the gas or the salt water out of their eyes with anything because they were covered in it Jeez. and if they pick up their shirt so i would i was the one who was least the least wet from the seawater and from jumping in and the floor where Tony was kind of consoling people and stuff was super wet. <clears throat> so he was wet. So I was literally doing this to them with my shirt so that they wow. could wipe their eyes and they'd come down and get my shirt and pull my shirt up from the top to wipe their eyes every time they'd get back on the boat because their eyes were on fire. And since we had thrown the ice chests out that had a few bottled waters, they couldn't even rinse their faces. Wow. So they were with gasoline <clears throat> and salt water drenched in this for hours Jeez. for hours you know and um so they jumped into the water i mean oh yeah to to get bridget in we didn't know how injured <coughs> she was so they their instinct was to jump into the water for rene he couldn't even move it was like lifting up dead weight out so of the me water. i was the only one that i was able to yes to yeah you were the, get you, on my own you and Bridget helped yourselves up onto the water. We didn't have to get into, into the, the water. Uh, okay. But when they got to Bridget, they did anyway. 
because they didn't know everybody was so full of adrenaline that we just thought getting the water help her in. Um, Rene wasn't wasn't as fortunate as you two. No, he no, was he no, was no. really injured, and um, <clears throat> so they had to spend some time in the water. And you got to remember. It was deep enough to where they couldn't stand on the floor. <coughs> so you're floating in the water, doggy trying paddling, to. trying to lift weight. And every time you pick up, you, you go, go down. down. down? Yeah. So they jumped into the water. I'm trying to pilot the boat with one hand and pulling them up. Tony is trying to do what he can do. And finally, eventually, I let go of the wheel and we get up and we grab uh, Rene by the, by the shorts or whatever he was wearing. And just we all picked them up. Leroy and Roland follow, and they're literally just they don't even know what to do because they realize that they are drenched, drenched, and, and, yes. and it's gas. Wow! So wow. my eyes, my eyes are burning, my eyes are burning, and sure enough, you know, Tony and Tony's already all wet because he's been trying to pull them up, and and I was the my shirt was the driest shirt that we had. So they started, you know, pulling my collar and pulling here and trying to wipe their faces and give me water. Do we have water? I need to rinse my face. We had, and we had nothing. We had thrown everything off. Wow. Yeah, I so, don't remember having any any issue with my eyes. During, yeah, no. In the meantime, that I was in the while I was in the in the uh, water. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, no. These guys were 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 beat up bad. So you know, <clears throat> Tony was telling us about your shirt, which I found super interesting. That that your shirt was like cut yeah, and just certain like, spots like like shredded, right scissors or like something like it looked perfectly shredded what do you, what do you think that I was don't, i don't remember that's one part that i don't even remember what happened that's why i was telling you i called my dad uh, about uh, two weeks and he ago. confirmed it yeah yeah he confirmed that you remember <laughs> how i got to my how my clothes in the, yeah they were all shredded they were all like like they use scissors to cut it out it wow exactly like that i don't it remember the only exactly thing like i remember again that i was wearing just one shoe that's the only thing that i remember <laughs> wow. i don't know why it was a it was so obvious to everybody that it looked like it would it looked like maybe he was coming from a costume party and that was done deliberately <laughs> that everybody was looking like how did that happen how did that happen but Things were going on that we couldn't really spend much time trying to figure it out, so right. we just left it alone. But yeah, he, it was, it is, it's, it's puzzling because nobody else's clothes was like that. It's one little detail that is like, how? Oh, yeah. yeah. How do you explain? And if you it? rolled down your window and crawled out, because I thought maybe he, I thought maybe you crawled out of, of the windshield, and there was, you know. Maybe. Yeah, but the windshield didn't. I mean, it was yeah, intact. I mean, yeah. no, nothing came out happened. of his <laughs> yeah. driver window. So that to me was always and still is puzzling. And apparently it's puzzling to everybody because nobody knows how your clothes got that way. <laughs> had it been, it yeah. <laughs> had you arrived at the hospital that way, I can see the EMTs cutting your yeah. pants or cutting your oh, shirt. Oh, yes. You I know, know, that's fine. But you were like that when you came onto the boat fresh out of the water. So it, it was. It was super, super weird, hmm. to say the least. Um, and uh, and yeah, you know, to this day, I'll smell gasoline or 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 drop, you know, a couple of drops of gasoline on my tennis shoe or something, and then get into the car and you smell it, and that is literally like a little time machine and takes me right back to yes. that to that wow. moment. It happens to me also. Yeah, it's wow. weird, and. You know, you can you can smell an old book from a, a library, and all of a sudden you're teleported to elementary. You know, when you were there, and yeah. and you can smell your mom's perfume, and 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 be taken back to a fondest memory with her. Well, gasoline takes me back to that night. Yeah, wow. And, and it's just it's the to this day it'll happen. I'll be like, wow, Gustavo. From your experience, everything that you've gone through in the past twenty years, this is a direct message to the other survivors. What would you say to them? to help alleviate or not alleviate but i guess soothe 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 their their soothe past yeah. past i mean each person is different yeah so uh, i don't know for me like again uh, what it helped me out a lot was what my dad told me right away yeah just pick it out just let it go talk about it talk about it don't don't don't, don't keep it to yourself so i don't know about uh bridget and renee if they 
feel uh, different or they want to keep it under to their own. I don't know. So, I mean, I don't want to say anything because uh, I'm not sure what everybody is different. Everybody has a different healing process. Um, <clears throat> what your dad told you is true and it works. Um, my therapist that was being paid for by the attorneys and everything at the time told me, Robert, the best thing I can tell you is to write it down and get it out of your mind. He would tell me, um, your mind, our minds, is the deepest, darkest hole you can go into, even though it's just in yeah, your mind. That's right. And if you stay in there and you try to argue with your thoughts by yourself in your mind, you'll get lost. He yeah. says, but if you say things out loud and you give it to the universe and you hear it with your ears, instead of hearing it mentally in your mind, it'll sound different and, and, and it'll touch different parts of your soul, of your body. So say it out loud, even if it's, even if it's embarrassing, even if it's uh, frightening, even if it's, you know, a memory you don't want to really talk about for people who've been through traumatic things. You can't just keep it in your mind. You gotta, you gotta say it out loud and give it back and to the give world. it back to the world, you know? And when you hear it coming out of your mouth, it'll, it'll cleanse you. And, and I started doing that. I would tell yeah. my, no, it helped me a lot. Yeah, it helps. Personally, I would talk to me, my wife and, and sometimes us as men don't want to revisit things that'll, that'll get us choked up or, 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 or that'll, you know, make us teary. And I and told stuff. you at the beginning, even though it's been 20 years, it probably yeah. were at some point that my voice is going to crack. Yeah. Uh, you're crack. cracking and, and you, you get emotional and growing up here, siendo Latino, Pues eso es lo de la machista de que pues no, don't sí. cry and don't this and the, so I just started crying man I just started every time I had to I would talk to my wife I would talk to my kids I'd tell them the story and if I cried I cried and 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 there was no shame in it and I think it helped me tremendously um, to to let it out to not keep it in here or, or yes. here because it's un cancer and it'll 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 mm. eat up it I you. don't know but uh it's been helping me a lot Good just one. to keep That's continue talking about it even though it's 20 years but uh it, it i mean it always helps yeah. how often do you think about what happened at night oh, almost every day every day <laughs> wow. yeah every day yeah. in a small detail or a big detail or or, or it's every day yeah wow. every day last night i was here um i opened for a group of guys who wanted to play and, and have a good time here so we opened up and on the way home I was on an overpass and there was three or four cars in front of me. <clears throat> as soon as those cars' taillights disappear on the other side, I didn't get an ugly feeling. Yeah, thank God I don't get scared anymore. Um, but it took me right back. It took me right back. And knowing that I was going to talk to you today and I was thinking, man, this is what Gustavo saw. He saw tail lights going over but he didn't realize that they had fallen they thought just no because he already crossed the the tallest point and yes he's safely on the road on the other side but you know what i don't i don't remember i don't want to say no mm -hmm. seeing any any cars in front of me okay so well, that's probably a good the thing, last yeah. one was already yeah. <laughs> on the water had already fell uh because i don't remember seeing no one in front of me again i don't remember seeing no one uh, behind, behind you me either. Yeah. which now i know that there were someone mm -hmm. behind me but uh, no, I was the only one on the causeway, that thing. and it, because it was too dark. And what it, I mean, uh, most of the before going down, most of the time I was just looking at the babe, looking at the because uh, of the, the light, lights. It's distracted wow. them. And I said, what? I mean, just thinking inside. What? I mean, they're fishing. Why? Why so much light? Yeah. And then boom. <laughs> yeah, that goes back to your theory about that that light that was getting everybody's attention. They were driving by. Me, the me my attention. And and it wasn't just a little light. It was a light. That looked like it was shooting up to the moon. Yeah, because wow. uh, it was a train light. I turned like, and I look and, and, and now that I just turned up, I saw the light and there. Okay, I continue driving. So I was just going like this. What is going on? What is yeah, going well, on? And then boom! Wow. Now I know <laughs> what was going on. Yeah. So, so to answer your question, I think that the people who were there, Gustavo, myself, and 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 other individuals, I think we think about it every day, at yeah. one point or another, yes. whether you dwell on it, and that's the difference between healing. That's what that's what makes us heal differently. 
because when Gustavo and I think about it now, I think it's for a fraction of a second, and it, it's turned into an appreciation of that night. We survived it. We Is that how it you feel? Yes. You know, and, and I think others could possibly dwell on it longer, and the dwelling becomes guilt, or it becomes you know, sadness or it becomes fear. And sometimes, sorry to interrupt you Definitely. again, but sometimes uh, right after my accident, not right now, 20 years after, but right after my accident, a year, two years, three years after, sometimes I was feeling like guilty and I was asking God, God, why me mm -hmm. that I'm here? And uh, <laughs> the other eight don't. Yeah, that, that's, that's survivor's guilt. And it's a real thing. But just the way we're not meant to understand God and how he does things, we're, we're just here to accept. And that acceptance is the difference between healing and, and moving on. You got to accept that it's not for you to understand what God's plan is. Yeah. It's not for us to um, try to recreate it and think oh well this could have done th it's that's just not for us for us is to understand that everything happens for a reason yes y Diosito sabe lo que hace. and that's where we're at those who dwell on well why me and how come them they didn't survive and you're you're, you're asking questions that will never be literally answered. will never be answered yeah. it's like having a puzzle and you want to finish the puzzle, but you're missing all these pieces. That puzzle is only going to bring frustration to you for the rest of your life because you can't finish it. Well, the questions that, that I hope people are not asking themselves, like, why me? And, and what am I supposed to do now with this new chance at life? Those questions aren't for you to ask. Those questions are, are for you to just put aside and forget them and understand that you've been given a chance you've been blessed and god has a plan for you because if he didn't you wouldn't be around at this point yeah what do you what did your parents say about the whole thing that after after the fact what was going through their head i don't know if you can answer <laughs> <laughs> his father's here right here yeah my dad is us. here so that's why sometimes you saw me just turning to look at this side yeah but my dad well i don't know well the only thing that they told me my mom especially uh that if i would have died on that accident she didn't know what what she would have done what what was what was going to happen we need to understand that there's a word for losing a spouse you become a widow or a widower no existe una palabra that describes a parent who has lost a child. No. You no. can't look at that. You can't put a word no. on that. It's something so ugly that nobody's ever cared to name or, or, or give a word to. Yeah. So for, for a parent to lose a child is such an ugly thing that literally there's a word for everything and every scenario in this world except that. Put your mind around that. Well... My parents, after telling me, you know, obviously how proud they were of, of what we did, told me what I just told you guys. My mom said, Mijo, I don't know what I would have done had I lost you that night. Yeah. And the there's, no told me. there's no word for that. She says, I don't, what do I become? A parent mm -hmm. without a child who loses a child, what is that word for that? Mijo? And I said, I don't know. And she says, exactly. Nobody's ever taken, we have widowers and we have widows. Yeah. But a parent doesn't get to be called something when they lose a child. She said, I would have been that nothing. There's just a void. It's just a void. Let me ask you this, Gustavo. Um, the supernatural part of that night, the woman in the water. Um, what do you think about that? When I heard, I mean, I don't remember. I don't know if it was, I was already in the boat when that yeah. happened. No, no. When we, when we went to go get Gustavo... We had just left you, turned around, was when we saw her and everything. Oh, okay. yeah. I mean, I was Gustavo the... René. Yeah. Oh, okay. But yeah. I was already in the boat. Yes. Yeah, but again, you were in that position of... Yeah, I was in shock. So just like, I just mean, the void. I don't remember 
them asking me what happened to your clothes. I mean, I didn't, and that's mm -hmm. because Bridget told me we were asking you, yes. and you were not answering. You were just like, uh, yes, no, I don't know, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. in trance. Like, in, like in trance. Yeah. yeah. So that particular part, uh, I don't remember. I didn't hear. I didn't see anything. But hearing about it now. Yeah, it's, How does it's, it? No, uh, wow. I mean, it's, it's an I mean, amazing it's event. A, I mean, you were with us at know. the hospital, though, when when we went to go visit Rene. Rene. Remember when we walked into his room? So we didn't talk about it. Remember, I said, Rene's dad came out and said, who did I speak to that night? He said, you. And, and then he and I kind of understood what was going on. But it was something that both of us were afraid to talk about because of how magnificent it was it sounded in our minds, you know, thinking that I was talking to his wife. So we didn't, we didn't discuss it other than he told me that she had passed away in the exact hospital room that his son was recovering now. Yeah, that's, that that's was, it, 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 it blew my mind, man. I was like, mira esta madre hasta lo puso en el mismo recámara, en el mismo cuarto donde estuvo ella. I mean, donde probablemente está ella todavía. Oh, you yes. Know? So, it, it was mind blowing for me to hear that, um, and to come to that conclusion, and then and then I come to the conclusion, and I understand that that Rene's dad also is making the same connections, and neither of us could bring ourselves to talk about it. Wow, it was just too intense. So, do, do you intense. believe everything that happened that that from yeah, these I do guys? Believe, yeah. Because, I mean, why they're going to invent something after all they saw, after all they went through, after all they were mm -hmm. going through at that particular moment? Why, why make s uh, yeah. s something that... Uh, so that, uh, I do. I mean, it's hard to believe, but, uh, but I do believe it. I thank you for saying that because there have been trying times in my life when even I've questioned it, when even I've said, man, maybe I didn't see what I think I saw. And I would never bring myself to ask Roland or, or, or any of the guys because we just we don't did, talk about we don't it. Talk about it. Yeah. It's, it, it that, that night became like Fight Club, the movie. Like, number rule about Fight Club, you don't talk about Fight Club. Well, we never talked about that night. And to this day, unless we were sitting in front of a mic and or doing a Q&A or something, we don't talk about it. And you've seen us as, as soon as these mics shut off, and as soon as the Q and A's are done at our screenings and stuff, so you leave it there. That's where it stays. Yes, because it's not something that that we we talk about. It's just really I don't know how it evolved into that. But um, I thank you for saying that that you believe me and 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 us and our affidavits that we that we took that night or that morning, and um, and I do believe that that uh, Renee's mother and and God had had their hands involved in that night so that there could be certain survivors and that so that there could be a, a story, you know? Yeah. Uh, yo me enamorado de esa historia. I really have fallen in love with, with, with that story. And I look at my mother differently and I look at my wife and how she tends to my children. And there's a different respect there um, because again, you know, a, a mother's love yeah, you see things in a in a different way. In a different now, way, yeah. They're seeing things in a different way. The way they they went through that accident, I'm seeing a, a different way. The way yeah. I went through mm -hmm. that accident. So yeah, you see life in a different way. So before we finish off the podcast, Gustavo, kind of just if you have anything else you want to share, please do. No, again, like and like I do every single day, uh, I give thanks to the Lord because. Uh, you never know what's going to happen the next day. Not right. even the next day, the next minute. The next second. Yeah. So the next second, you're right. So yeah. it's give thanks every day for a, for a new day in life. And just uh, wear your seat belts. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, guys, this is uh, the Thanks podcast. So Please subscribe. If you like what we're doing, make sure you share. Uh, Robert, I'm going to let you sign us off this time, man. Cause Everybody, you <laughs> thank you so much for following us. Gustavo. Thank you. It's an honor to be here in your presence and to hear your story. You guys, follow, share, be a part of this. It, it, the story belongs to all of us. Um, we love you guys for listening and participating. Good evening. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>